Hello. So, uh, I recently did a video about what homeless people need besides uh, living wage jobs and affordable housing. And in that video, I highlighted that there is a way of thinking, a set of core values that define the thinking of poor people and that poor people tend to be more generous, more giving than wealthy people. Uh, I guess there's a certain logic that kind of accompanies that because you don't exactly get wealthy by giving your wealth away, right? But uh, I talked about how the homeless need to be, and, and the poor, and people who have a certain way of thinking, they're spread thin throughout our society, uh, and their voices get drowned out by the masses. So, but there may be a million or so people the world over who share a certain set of core values, but because they're spread so thin, and they're one out, one out of every 7,000 people in the world, I think there's more homeless than that, but I'm just throwing numbers around. Uh, but anyway, if you pulled all these people together, even though they're a small percentage or a fraction of a percentage of the world population, they would comprise a nation. Uh, you can look at my previous video to get a sense of what I said there. But uh, anyway, I should point out that in the past few days, I've had a few interesting interactions with homeless people. Uh, just last night, I walked out of Union Station here in D.C. after it closed, and I had some more work to do on my computer, so I stood outside of the station, I set my laptop on a ledge on, on the uh, guard wall around the escalator going down into the subway station, and uh, I did some more work standing up with my computer on that ledge. Uh, and a guy walked up to me and he had a question for me, but he started in by saying, Hey, Mr. Intelligent. Uh, and he was somebody who I don't have a lot of interactions with. One of those people who knows about me, but who uh, I don't really hang out with. So it stood out that he knew things about me uh, without without us actually being, uh, shall I say, close friends. But there was another instance where a certain guy who sees me come in and out, he's actually uh, a security guard at his shelter, he sees me go in and out, and uh, he has something to say to me one day, but he started into his comments by saying, hey, you're so cool. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, so I I'm glad that people uh, noticed that about me and there are people in DC government who would say quite the opposite and who are trying to paint a very negative picture of me but that's another story and another video uh, maybe, maybe I'll do that one soon but anyway uh, what I really wanted to say was that I, I had another interesting conversation with a homeless person earlier today uh, I walked out of the library just for a few minutes, I, and uh, I was actually going to shoot this video, but it was raining, so I stood under the overhang and I spoke to this homeless man, uh, and without him even knowing the things that had been on my mind lately, he just started into me about how the, the homeless need something similar to the YMCA, uh, a place where we can come together and not only address our needs in terms of washing clothes and preparing for job interviews, but where we can also have a sense of community. And I had not even told him about the video I had done. Uh, I had only put it up right before walking out and running into him, put it up on YouTube. And anyway, he and I had a very interesting discussion and talked about how society actually needs a certain percentage of people to be down on their luck. I told him how 
when I was meeting with Congressman John Conyers several years ago, uh, Mr. Conyers having been disgraced as part of the Me Too movement just a few months ago, uh, but a few years ago when I was meeting with him, Mr. Conyers pointed out to me that when unemployment gets down to 4%, Congress stops working on it. And I've actually heard that stat stated by others since then, but uh, so I know it's true, because it wasn't just Mr. Conyers that said it, but I, I, didn't, I didn't doubt it when he said it. But nonetheless, uh, that is the truth, that when, when unemployment gets down to 4%, Congress stops working on it. Uh, and so, so there, there's a confluence of different circumstances that come together to create homelessness, and these circumstances are not created entirely by the homeless. Uh, but that said, it was interesting that somebody who didn't know uh, what I had been thinking about uh, actually mentioned a very similar thought, saying that the homeless need something like a YMCA type of establishment where we can all come together and have a sense of community. Uh, I would have to add here that you don't just want poor people, homeless people to come together and talk about their woes. Uh, you, you can't really build a society, you can't really build a nation around poverty, around the lack of sustenance. Uh, I get that. But you can build a nation around the values, the values that homeless people have that are not dependent upon them remaining homeless and remaining poor. Uh, values such as uh, understanding each other's struggles. Values such as people who don't have very much sharing what little bit they have with others who have even less. Those types of values uh, can carry over e even when you're not literally homeless. Uh, but the same guy uh, he, he also said to me, without knowing anything about uh, my political musings, that, that he had spoken to a homeless service provider who, who said that, that he, the, the service provider, felt like voting should not be a high priority for homeless people, that homeless people have so many other things to be concerned with that voting uh, sh should be way down that list. Uh, now, given the fact that you only vote once every two years and it, and it only takes a matter of hours uh, at most, I mean, if you go into a, voter, a, a polling station that's not very busy at the moment, you may be in there for less than 15 minutes. I've actually worked voting polls. But uh, anyway, this, this homeless guy felt like the service, the service provider was wrong for saying that we, that voting should be a low priority for homeless people. Uh, and he was wrong for multiple reasons. One being that what politician is in power often determines uh, the, whether or not there's going to be an environment that's conducive to actually ending homelessness. Uh, but the other reason, of course, is that it doesn't take that much time out of your life to go vote. Uh, and, and that's a truth that carries over even for, for people who are not homeless. Uh, it might take an hour or two out of your life every two years to go vote. So you, you don't have much of an excuse. Uh, but let me see, what, what, what else do I want to toss out there? Uh, oh, and just moments later, I, I walked down the block and I, I hadn't gotten more than a block away from the library I, and uh, I ran across this guy who had a question for me because he, he told me about a conversation he had just had with somebody, somebody who, who said that a homeless person should never run for office. And, and uh, 
I'm not sure why exactly they said that, you know, but this guy who was speaking to me, I hadn't told him about my political musings either. Neither did I say it during this conversation, but he uh, said to me that, that he felt like poor people actually need somebody in government who has experienced poverty. And to condense what he said to me, I, I'll say that he, he also tossed around the possibility that even if the homeless person doesn't win elected office, that there should be some sort of homeless ombudsman uh, in the government who understands the struggles of homeless people, uh, who can relate. And uh, I just thought it was really interesting that I had not told either of these men about my political musings, about uh, me considering a mayoral run. But here they are telling me things that are consistent with what I've been thinking about and uh, YouTubing about. And, and like I said, I had just uploaded the video, so I'm pretty sure that they hadn't seen it. Uh, I spoke to one guy about three minutes after uplo uploading the video, and another guy about 20 minutes after uploading the video, a block away. Um, but uh, I guess it's also in line with this idea of homeless community, you know, what I'm about to tell you now, is that yesterday I spoke to a woman who's, who, uh, well, she is 60 years old herself, but she is a chaperone for a group of young people in their teens, uh, and she teaches them service and has them to learn about homelessness. Uh, I went to a meeting yesterday where homeless people were teaching her and the teens in her group about homelessness. Uh, I was not actually meant to be part of that meeting. I went there to meet somebody. I thought their meeting would be over when I got there, but it wasn't. But anyway, so I ended up sitting in for the last uh, 30 minutes of it. But I ended up speaking to this woman after the meeting, and she explained to me how that she had gone six years ago to a place called Sum, so Weathers Mighty, a place here in Washington, D.C. that feeds the homeless. There was a man who at that time was directing the uh, cafeteria, because Sum actually has several different uh, buildings with several different functions, including a drug program, uh, a housing program, a few other things. They, ha they have a lot going on. They've been around for over 40 years. Uh, and she said that Back in 2012, a man named Seneca Woods, who was directing the cafeteria of some, uh, had told her and the young people that she was chaperoning that it, when, when you give out these plates, don't, don't look people in the eyes. Just hand them the plate, don't look them in the eyes. Uh, and, and, and she said that in her group, she had a young man who was mentally challenged, but even though he was mentally challenged, he picked up on what was said. And, and he actually ascertained that some treat people like cattle. Uh, and even before she told that story, you know, she, she led into it by saying that she had a problem with some. And, and I actually guessed what the problem was before she even gave me that anecdote. Uh, and the problem that she saw with it was that people get rushed in and they're given just a few minutes to eat and they get rushed out. Uh, there are other places where the homeless are able to actually sit and, and have meaningful conversations. Uh, but when people tell me that they have a problem with how some functions, I always know what it is. That's, that's it right there. Uh, and... So there are people who want to treat the homeless like people and to have meaningful conversation with the homeless, uh, and, but some is just not that environment. Now, we, we did acknowledge that some does a lot of good things. I mentioned they have a drug program, they have a housing program, they have a few other things going on. But when it comes to their cafeteria on at 71 O Street, Northwest Washington, DC, uh, it, it is quite impersonable. 
how they do things. But, but this woman told me that after she was told and the young people that she was chaperoning were told, don't look him in the eyes, just hand him the plate, uh, that she decided not to go back. And she said that she wrote a letter to some explaining why she would never return. Uh, and so that just kind of speaks to the issue of treating homeless people like people, but it also speaks to the issue of the homeless having a sense of community. And I wish that community were not built on poverty uh, and on lacking one or more basic human necessities. But for what it's worth, uh, struggles do tend to bring people together. And, and uh, like I said in a previous video, the homeless actually have an easier time talking about the grim realities of life than house people do. Uh, I think that house people can be somewhat impractical at times, especially when it comes to their reluctance to talk about the grim realities of life uh, and how after you talk about so many of the news items which are so negative then they say hey let's talk about flowers and pretty stuff you know let's let's talk about something positive uh but hey you know as long as there are problems as long as there are major social ills we do need to have lengthy meaningful conversation about these things and figure out how to resolve them okay so it is through these these conversations about these negative issues that we come up with possible solutions uh, and this is getting to be one of my longer videos, so I'll stop there.